Hey, it's Pat Sloan. Uh, tonight we're going to do a little uh, chat with Pat, a little Facebook Live. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about some projects I've been working on, tell you some of the things that I've been doing. Uh, we'll chat back and forth. You can uh, leave me some comments and, you know, just get to know each other a little better tonight. Uh, I have oh, a lot of things set up, but while... Um, some of you are jumping in here. Why don't you just tell me, like, down in the comments, uh, just say hi, tell me where you're from. That might be kind of fun because, you know, we have 91,000 people here, and you're from all over the place, and it's always fun to see. Now, I have to use my tablet to kind of read along and see what you're commenting. So I will be doing that down. Let's see, I've got, got the tablet so that I can look at the comments while we're going and I want to uh, be sure that it's running and I'm going to see this and share it over to my business page for those of you who might be not be uh, on my Facebook group which is Quilt Along with Pat Sloan so let's see I'm looking for it to be running on here I can't see any comments yet. Ah, there it is. So I'm starting to see everything coming in now. Uh, if you ask me a question, there's a slight delay. So I will be looking for that. And I'm going to share it over on my um, business page. So exciting. So fun. I can't believe, like, technology-wise, we get to do this. Um, so I've been really busy this uh, week since I got back from the trade show. I've had a lot of... Um, uh, deadlines, so yeah, that's you know, got to do stuff. I had a lot of writing. Okay, let me just finish this one second. There, gonna get that going. Uh, get it over there on the other page. Post. There we go. So what is there? Oh, so there's people from Florida, Central Illinois. So I'm in Virginia. In case you didn't know that, East Coast, uh, and if you are listening, uh, you know, from another country where you're not really familiar with the U.S. Geog geography, you know, where, like where Virginia is, I'm near Washington, D.C., which is on the very right side of the state and about the middle, so that's where I am. So so I'm, I've been working on doing a lot of writing, and doing a lot of writing is just, you know, what you might imagine. Uh, so I've got a lot of those projects are zooming along. I've got another big one to work on. And uh, then then I can start looking at some new things. But I also have travel coming up. That's just uh, what it's like. My my job, there's a lot of different things that I do. So, oh, we've got Canada. Hot and humid Houston is checking in. <laughs> yes, I was in St. Louis recently. And the one day... I'd lived in St. Louis before, so the humidity there can be crazy, and it was really crazy the one day. The people who aren't used to humidity were like, what? I don't think people realize St. Louis can be so humid. Utah, I bet you how many humidity in Utah over there. Um, so today, one of the things I did was um, I was doing a recording for my radio show because sometimes my guests, cannot um, make it for a live show. You know, they their schedules, their travel, so I do a recording so that I can still talk to them because not everybody's available when I normally record. So the fun thing that I did today was talk to the um, founder of the Koala Studios. So um, Ed, really great guy. Uh, and it was fun. He told me about his background and how they, you know, why he came up with the idea of creating beautiful custom sewing uh, tables for, uh, you know, seamstresses, for sewers, for sewists. Um, so that was, that was really neat. I had a great time talking to him. I might even get to meet him uh, when I'm going back out to St. Louis to Baby Lock uh, for an event. So... That'd be fun. I'd really like to, to, to meet everybody. Okay. What do we got going on down here? The people. Oh, okay. We've got the Cindy. Cindy and her mom. Hey. <laughs> Everybody's waving. So tonight, again, I have the 
two um, I have the two the two cameras and so here is my other camera and I've got the uh, oh now you can see it here that's right it's up there can you see up at the top but I have uh, I've got the tablet here and then what I'm going to do is just do some stuff down here on the table kind of hang out together and um, I'll go back up here so I'm not quite ready to do that just uh, want to get some thoughts together um, one of the things is our solstice project you know I've been doing I started this on the first day of the solstice which lasts 182 days and I'm running the one quilt block a week on I love to make quilts which is my website for my sew alongs for my free sew alongs are all over there and I did this because I've always wanted to do it I wanted to do a quilt within those 182 days I think the solstice sometimes is a different number of days or you know like one day difference but this year it's 182 days and I wanted to make I thought it'd be fun just make a block a week and I'm not working ahead I'm doing the block actually most of the time after I've written the pattern I write the pattern and then often I'm making the block afterwards um, just because that's how I wanted to experience it and then each week I wrote something that was kind of like a journal, you know, sort of what's happening, and that's how I named the blocks. So, okay, what do we got going on down here? Hi, Lori. Lori's from Eastern North Carolina. Oh, gosh, where's, I don't even know what's, what country that is, but Sylvia, hey, she's maybe in Spain or South America or France or somewhere, St. Pierre. I'm not sure where that is. Um, I don't speak other languages very well, so I'm not familiar with that one. East Coast of New Brunswick with Jean. Okay, so uh, let's sort of do some chatting because I'm going to be here about half an hour and I thought it'd be fun to show you my block for today because we did the solstice and today I called it Lucky Girl because that's sort of how I felt this week. I felt incredibly lucky um, on many, many levels for being able to do these things, for being able to meet all of you, for just just everything. It just seemed like the, what I was feeling this week. So here, let me switch cameras because I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you my block. And when I did Lucky Girl, I messed around actually with uh, half square triangles and I laid them all out. I just had ones cut and I laid them out and I thought this would be fun to just actually design the block by positioning things and not drawing it first and I ended up with this center unit and I could do you know some you know other things in here. I could have put more blocks but I thought I wanted to do something different and I just didn't want one big square so that's how I ended up with the small square in the center and then the block around it. I thought that just seemed like it was different and sort of fun. Um, this fabric in the middle is the same as the, the corners. And then I have this wild stripe in all of these um, portions of the half square triangle. <clears throat> and I thought I'd show you a little bit about stripes tonight. Would you like that? It's like, go ahead and click the click the like buttons over there um, you know click the likes if you want to uh, have me tell you a little bit about working with stripes and half square triangles I'm going to see if I can manage to um, do this and somebody asked me a question here I thought I saw a question um, ah, everybody's saying where they're from it's awesome all over the place and you're staying I don't know how late you stay up but I'm hoping this is not too late I just don't want to do this in the middle of the afternoon because it's like, you know, who's, who's available in the middle of the afternoon? I know some of you are, but, you know, I'd rather do it in the evening kind of as a wind down. Everybody winds down. You get to hang out. That's what I do with my own girlfriends. We don't meet in the middle of the day. We meet in the evening. Um, sort of at the end of the day, it's kind of, the, it's kind of joyful to be able to um, go and meet my friends and sit and stitch and chat, probably more chatting. <laughs> more eating <laughs> than anything else um, okay so somebody asked me a question I totally lost it so if uh, oh I think oh I think I remember somebody asked me about the June 28th the next the next um, 
Wednesday free block of the month so long where I'm running the solstice uh, is uh, starts June 28th but I'm not telling you what it is yet so you have to wait Shh, you have to wait the secret so if you want to see this this one I'll show you up close here is my lucky girl block all right so this stripe this crazy stripe let me switch cameras because I want to show you how now, it looks like I did some nutty patchwork, but I really didn't. This is piece of fabric is what I cut cut it from. See? Ta-da! That is where that stripe came from. This fabric is printed like this, and it's designed by my friend Victoria Finley Wolf. Um, I may have the edge on here. Ah. Can you see it up there? Okay, let me switch the camera. That's actually more effective. I think I can show you the edge. Ta-da! So it is called Manor Stripe. I think she has it on her website. Um, but that's why I have and can have this sort of crazy looking stripe in here with just doing a half square triangle. That is because this crazy fabric is printed that way. So buying fabric that's fun is, is important because you can't just, you know, all of a sudden decide to have that crazy stuff if you don't have any fabric to make it happen. All right, so let's see. We've got Australia. What time of the day is it there? I don't know. I think your state, your country rather, is so huge that you have, or like us, you have like the different time zones. And like some of you are probably in my normal time zone. So Louisiana... So, okay, I have had a lot of people learning half square triangles during the solstice, and you've noticed I like them a lot because I just can't imagine making a quilt without a half square triangle. I don't know how people do that, but I have, really, I don't. I, I just love them. I think the angles and the ability to create interesting stuff is more fun. So I want to show you, okay, so one of the blocks that I didn't have a half square triangle was the block beforehand. Oh, so I have, I have some questions that got brought to me by my trusty assistant. <laughs> Better know it's the shipping department. So they brought me some questions. Um, okay, so some, Jamie asked me, all right, so this is a good one. You want to hear these? Say yeah. Not yes. Click yes. <laughs> so Jamie asked me if I um, do this for a living. Yes, I do. This is my full-time job. It is my husband's full-time job. We um, are a small family-owned business. We don't do anything else, nor have we retired. We are not retired. We didn't retire from anything. So 17 years ago, we started this design business. If you go to pathphone.com, you go to my about page, I have several articles that, um, interviews that people have asked me about. Um, so, you know, that, this is my, this is what I do for a living, is um, my design business. And I love it. I, my first business, um, my first career was in computers. Uh, if you look two days ago, or yesterday I think it was, on my, um, blog. I wrote 10 things you might not know about me. Uh, so you might enjoy reading that. So the step follow-up question she said to that was, um, do I ever feel like I get a dry spot? Like I'm thinking, you mean, do I get stuck? Well, of course, you know, 17 years, it's not like I'm going to, you know, have full steam ahead every single day. I'm normal. I'm a real person. We, everybody does. Every job you've probably ever had, everything you probably ever do there's some spot where you're like hmm you know I'm this is I'm not feeling this I'm you know I'm stuck I don't know where to go I have to regroup you know I have to you know get in a new mode yeah so you know but but you know it's my it's my chosen career that I love so you know I'm happy with it I was happy with my first career I spent 21 years in computers and I I loved most of that until the end then <laughs> Then I didn't love it anymore. Then I wanted to do something different. So um, I don't think that'll happen here because uh, I, it's always changing. There's always something fun like this, Facebook Live. I mean, I could not do this a year ago. 
A year ago, I could not sit here and live broadcast to you on Facebook. It wasn't available. It didn't exist. It's very, very new. So that's exciting. It's fun. So let's, let's look at stripes because... Jean wants to know, how do you get stripes to match up? Well, first of all, Jean, I don't try to match them up. Um, it may seem like I try to match them up, but let me show you something. On the weather vane block, which I'm going to hold up, okay? So there's the weather vane block, right? I've got the little border at the, uh, border at the top already. So here's the weather vane block, and I think most of you thought, like, these stripes were perfectly matched. Okay, that... <laughs> This first time I'm looking at it is pretty darn good, but that is an accident. So here we go. There. See? I'm showing you very closely. You can see they are not perfectly matched. So um, let me go down. Let me go down here a minute because what I want to show you is that that particular stripe that I'm using here, see this stripe that goes like this? You'd think that's like super hard, but actually... I used a fabric that's a diagonal stripe. This is this fabric that I bought. Okay. This fabric that I bought is a diagonal stripe, which made it very, very easy to do half square triangles. I have, um, I tried to put all this stuff out here, so maybe I might be able to just pick something up. Ooh, okay. So you see this and this? All right. Let me show you. Let me show you how to audition. Now, if you have, if you have this book, okay, if you have the book, I show you this in the book. So it, it's in there because I like using stripes and things. So here is the stripe fabric, okay? And then if I want to audition it, to see how it's going to go. Like if I'm doing two at a time half square triangles, I'm sewing across like this, right? Um, that means one half will be one triangle, one half will be the other triangle. So if I want to audition, if I'm going to do the stripe, see the line here? Whoops. Let's see. See the line? The line goes down from this point to this point. If I want to audition, all I have to do to see that I'm going to have it like I want is fold it back. That's it. I just fold it and say, okay, well, that is the correct direction. If I turn this, okay, you can see I'm going to rotate it. If I'm going to rotate that, then my audition, the stripes are entirely different. They're going the entirely opposite way. And this is how you can figure out the best direction to put your stripe, is to use um, your two squares before you sew them, you know, doing two at a time, so that you actually can test out by just folding over the stripe to see where it's going to be. Now, if you're a person who wants all those stripes, like when they come like this, if you want them to be absolutely perfect, well, that's just like not how I work. Um, and that's, you're going to have to do a lot of auditioning and it's sort of like doing mitered corners where you're trying to get the pattern. You're going to have to um, do a lot of mock-ups and um, probably crease your lines and be sure that you're very, very accurate and actually mock it all up before you sew it so that you know exactly where those seams, that, that fabric will be positioned. I would, for half square triangles, I would probably oversize them. That way you can cut them down, but then even then still you're going to have to be really... Um, very, very precise and do a lot of um, sort of measuring ahead of time. That's kind of not how I work. I'm not that interested in making them match. Uh, they're, they're fine for me, but that would be how you, you go across. Go, go ahead and do that. All right. Stripes would be awesome binding. Yes, the um, stripes are amazing binding. And then if you get the this stripe, this one here, you know, the diagonal stripe, that's pretty cool because the whole time it's going, going like this. All right, so what else did I bring? Oh, I brought the block, my solstice block, with the squares. Ta-da! This is the one with the red nautical. So I have to think, which way do I turn it so that those words 
it's a, well, it's a tossed. It's a tossed nautical uh, fabric, so I'm not sure that any way will be correct. But we're getting close, right? We only have block number 25. Yay! And then uh, those 25 blocks will be done, and you can set that quilt. And this is a big quilt. If you put like a two inch, <clears throat> two inches around the whole outside, you'll get like a 90 inch quilt, which is going to fit most of your beds pretty darn nice um, for a bed size quilt. So I'm curious. So I want you to leave me a comment down here and tell me, have you made a bed quilt for yourself? Is there a quilt on your bed that you made for you? Um, I have one. I have a lot of quilts I made for my bed. Uh, I like to change them out, but I know that that's something a lot of quilters, mm, you sort of, you make them for other people and you never get to make them for yourself. So um, that might be a goal. You know, if this one suits your you or your room, maybe it becomes your bed quilt. Uh, it's been a fun a way to every week do one block. I know a couple people are telling me that they really love that. Okay. What do I do to unwind? Okay, Nora asked me a question. What do I do to unwind? Well, I kind of like to sew. Sometimes my business requires a lot of writing and not as much sewing. Um, you know, like, like, like a whole, like hours of sewing. You know, hours of sewing. I might sew a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, but I also like to just take walks. I like to walk the neighborhood. Um, I like to go, you know, away and do something totally away from the house. Um, and I do some gardening. I really, you know, like to garden, but I don't garden as much as I used to. Um, just because we travel, you know, not here. So gardening's a little less, but I still like that. I like to go out and just, you know, pick off the dead flowers, just take a break, do something like that. Okay. Let's see, is anybody telling me that they are putting a quilt on their bed? All right, nobody's fessing up. Okay, so no, not yet. Okay, so a lot of people saying no, they didn't put a quilt on. Okay, so there's somebody who said they did my secret garden for them. Who was that? Susie. Yay, you did one for yourself. Um, so I need to, like somebody needs to say they have a quilt on their bed. Uh, go ahead, think about it. There must be one you can put on your bed. My goal at one point was to make like I have a Christmas quilt. And I thought I want to make a Halloween quilt for my bed. I have a uh, summer fabric quilt. You know, I'm nuts. I just gotta change it up. <laughs> gotta fix it up like that. All right, so this, I'm going to show you this book, because this is the other person I interviewed today, which you'll hear on Monday, which is Susie, who did Following the Barn Quilt Trail, and I did the whole whole half of the second half of the show. We had a really nice, relaxed chat about what she does, and why she got interested in this, and how she and her husband are RVing full-time. And traveling and you know the research she did to put this book together inside um, there's lots she does it by um, state so she went and just interviewed people by state and then she has gorgeous photos of the barn quilts so that was I really enjoy talking to Susie today and hearing about the quilts and how the barn, hearing about barn quilts and hearing about why she was interested. You know, really, I wanted to get to know her. That's one of the things I do on my talk show is I don't necessarily just want to hear about the people's books or their quilt patterns or whatever. I'd like us to get to know them, you know, you and me. Be, get to know them as a maker, as a quilter, you know, what inspires and motivates them. So that's a little bit why I call it a talk show because... I want to know, I want to just make everybody real, because we are, and so you, you get to hear what they're like. All right, let's see what else is going on. What's next, what's our next project going to be? The next project after the solstice is still a secret. You'll, you'll hear on June 28th. That's when I'll tell you what the next one is. Um, I think that's more fun. Just the way, it, the way I am. 
But I do. I am going to do a post before that. I'll still have a post post on the on the uh, Wednesdays in between. Without the new block, I'm going to show you which fabrics I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to put up a gallery so that you can put your whole solstice quilt up on my gallery and share it. Uh, and that'll be on the home page where I have, you know, the block page, which has all the blocks. So I'm going to do that, um, those two things uh, in, the, in the weeks in between. So it'll be fun stuff, fun stuff. Okay, there's a, oh, Laverna has a pineapple quilt, a king-size pineapple quilt. She made it 16 years ago. Ooh, you have to show me. You have to, I, I've not made a pineapple quilt. You know, those, um, for, if you're not familiar with them, it doesn't look like a pineapple. I have made a block, pineapple block. <laughs> there's a pattern on my free pattern page from Jackie. Uh, but the pineapple quilt is like, think like log cabin, but everything's angled. So, like, they're angled like this all the way out. It's very, they're usually quite scrappy, but they don't have to be. They can be, um, you know, they can be rose control colors. They're, they're neat. You generally do a pineapple block on a foundation. It might be, if you want to leave the foundation in, you could have printed, like, muslin or, you know, to have it on. Um, and there's special rulers if you're trying to make everything precise and meet up. I don't think I'd do that. I think I'd make it a little bit more, um, you know, just sort of randomy and fun. Okay. What else is going on in here? There's a lot of you joining tonight. I don't know how many, but this is pretty fun. I want to show you something else. Okay. So here was... Uh, here was the block I did from the weather vane, the alternate from the weather vane. Do you remember? The weather vane had a 12 inch size, but that was the one block out of all of them. I could not pull something out of the weather vane that made sense and was looked all right. It was like, uh, you know, I could pull a unit, but then I had to put a border and I didn't like the look of it. And then I tried something else and like that. I was like, nah, we're just going to do something else. So this block, though, I think is pretty neat because I shared a post when I shared the block and I said this would be great for your charm packs because you could take your charm packs and you could just create you know with an, with an alternate fabric or take the darks and the lights of your charm packs and you could make these blocks and you could make like a whole quilt of them the other thing my table is getting super messy here let me just uh, show you something okay so I have these containers these shoebox containers, which fit in my Koala Studios um, one storage area perfectly. So what I'm doing is these are holding my scraps when I cut them up. See, there's that, there's that stripe again. And I had some of these from the baby quilt where I sewed. See, I sewed the pieces because I'm being like frugal. And here's some of my Sunday Drive scraps. So... This stuff, like um, some of this stuff, I'll put a link uh, in the in the post then when I'm done. So this shoebox has the three and a half because that's for this block. These are cut three and a half so that I can start making these like as I go, like you know, in between other things. I can sew up and I can start making these blocks because they are this one is the block from last um yeah this is the eureka because my moment of you know how could i what could i do with all of these you know larger scraps because that's one of the things that you know when sometimes you have a scrap that is just too big to make two and a half and i thought okay three and a half and i want something simple 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 so this would be it that i can use this these things here and cut them up and I actually have another I have to get it over here I have this shoe box that I've been putting the larger scraps in so this is my stuff that I need to cut up <laughs> I thought originally I thought oh maybe I'll sit here tonight and cut these up and you can watch it's like no that's like watching paint dry why would you want to do that so 
<laughs> I just thought I'd just show you the bin instead. I don't like messy stuff, so my scrap bin, you know, and I don't keep lots of crazy scraps. I just keep these two and a half inch squares, and I'm going to keep three and a half inch squares. That's, that's pretty much what I keep. <clears throat> so, let me see if there's one more question. I'll answer another question for tonight. If somebody wants to write one, um, I'll watch there. Oh, look, lots of people now tell me your quilts are on your beds. Yay! Shirley has one. Monica has one. Yay! Kathleen has one. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm all for having a quilt on your bed. The quilt that you made. I think that's, I don't know, I kind of like that. You know, you picked it out, you found something you loved, loved enough to make and put on your bed. All right, let's see if I have another question from anybody. So I can, uh, Oh, lots and lots of things. I'm looking looking for a question. One more question for the night. Anybody? Oh, later on, uh, when you're back on the group, you know, post some pictures of what you've been sewing lately. Uh, I love, love, love seeing that. And tomorrow is June 1st. June, June, June. I don't know about you, but it's, you know... What is it? What is it with us that we're like, what is June already? But it'll be June first, and that means also the next block for the children's mystery, the children book mystery, my mystery block of the month, which just comes out, you know, one block a month, and it's 12 inches, and they're, uh, they're, it, it, I'm giving you a break for June. The June block will be really fun and fast to make, and I hope you love the children's book that I picked because I just got a kick. A kick out of it. I thought, oh, this is, this is good. So I hope, I hope you like that one. All right. So somebody said they've been making a lot of gifts lately. Okay. I'm just looking for a question to answer. Okay. So somebody's talking about practicing. Um, you know, just like anything, practicing free motion quilting, practicing getting an accurate seam, um, all of that is takes just a little practice, everything. I mean, we aren't born learning to quilt right away. So, all right. Well, if you end up thinking about um, a question, you it'd probably be easy, you know, just leave it in there. I'll actually go scanning through there and see, um, you know, what's there and see if it's something I can answer. So, Okay, here's one more question. Yay! Look where to go. I wanted to ask about uh, thread storage. I think I saw one about how do I store my threads. Well, if it wasn't quite that, that's what I'll answer. And I'll wrap it up for tonight. How do I store my threads? I have, um, I don't have it here. It's in another part of the room. But I have um, bins because I like my threads to be covered. I don't like them to be out in the open because I'm not using, I'm not like a long arm quilter who you're using the threads like every day, multiple threads and stuff. I'm, you know, I don't work like that. So I have them in a covered bins and then they stack. And then I put them in there by color, um, by weight. So because I have all the weights of Orophil and then so it'd be like 50 weight, the 40 weight, the 28 and the 12, and then the uh, floss and the 80 are in their own. So each one is in its own bin. And some of them, like the 50 weight, I have tons of it. So I have them by color. So I have like the green and yellow in one bin. The blue, a lot of blue, that's its own bin. Green is its own bin. So I have these bins. They're, they're not quite like these. They're a different kind of bin. They're a red stacker. I'll put a link because you can get them. They, but they stack really nice and they're red. You know, so I have to have red. Uh, <laughs> And they, I said I don't use them every day. Like I don't need to dig in and get different threads every single moment of the day. You know, I don't have them stored right here out on top of the desk or anything. So, all right. Someone's asking about getting my books in Australia. Well, you can go to the book depository, Monica, the book depository, or ask your local quilt shop or your favorite quilt shop in Australia. If they'll order them. It'd be very, very easy. They're easily available. They're current. Um, they can certainly order them for you, or you can get them online from the Fat Quarter Shop, or you can get them online at the Book Depository. 
So who does, they both do international sales. It just depends on where you like ordering from. Okay, so I am happy to, uh, and lucky, I'm a lucky girl, to uh, spend some time with you tonight. I appreciate everybody coming. Um, I'm Pat Sloan. If you have not visited my website, if you're new to my group, um, new to my work, uh, go to Pat Sloan, that's my name, dot com, and there I have a list of all the things that are going on. You can join the newsletter, um, which I plan to send one again. <laughs> I've been, uh, haven't gotten one out in like two weeks now, <sighs> so I will get one out that don't usually go that long. Usually send once a week, but um, that's what happened this time. So I'm Pat Sloan. This is my Facebook Live, and thank you everybody for being here. We'll do this. is going to be done on Wednesday nights whenever I'm home uh, or able. Like so I can't do it every Wednesday night, but I will tell you in advance, generally the day before, and then a couple times that day, that this will be one of the Wednesdays. It'll always be a Wednesday night. That way, it's consistent, and you know that when I do them, it'll be Wednesday. So, and that's also the day of the free block. So I just figured that would be a good day. Um, so I'll talk to you later. Get back to sewing. See you online. I'll go read the comments. I'll answer anything, and I'll update the um, the, the the paragraph. So see you later. <laughs>